Good afternoon. I hope you're not asleep. I hope the other presentations have been uh, really interesting. We certainly found them interesting. And we're going to talk to you about a project in Scotland that is really community driven. We are from the community um, and we are working with the community. Carrick, where we've said to you we're from Scotland, home of Robert the Bruce, King of Scotland, home of Robert Burns, one of the world's most famous poets. This is part of Ode to the Haggis, you might have heard of that uh, in the past. And home of Carrick Community Council Forum. Peter Mason is Chair of Carrick Community Council's Forum and will explain to you our history, how it started and the route to the project that we're going to talk to you about today. Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen. Uh, can I start away by saying how surprised I was about the excellent English that was being spoken. Uh, you may not be able to understand my Scottish accent. <laughs> So I'll try to kind of slow down a wee bit. We are actually uh, southwest of Glasgow. We are actually placed. We live in one of the most beautiful areas in the full of Scotland. We have the sea. We have the hills. We have the castles. We have the history. We are a population approximately 20, 23,000 people. We are all volunteers. There are 17 communities within Carrick. We looked at our economic development plan and we suddenly realized one of the things that we should be looking at is tourism. There was no tourism opportunities in Carrick. Nobody was promoting the area we stayed in. We went to the Scottish Tourism Board and asked them why. And it was quite clear to us that they just didn't have the funding to do it with. We as communities banded together, the 17 communities, and we decided that we would promote our own communities. We got approximately £100,000 off leader. We got approximately 60, 70,000 pounds of a local wind farm company and then we begged, borrowed and stole the rest of the money. So everywhere, everything that you've heard today is topped out. We are completely different. We are bottom up. We are not academics. We are people who know our area and love the area we stay in. And we would like to share that area with other peoples from other nations. We realize, of course, as I said, we are not professionals, we can't do it properly, so we hired in a company to do it for us. But at the same time being, this company was instructed very clearly, you would do it under what our communities wanted. We are doing thing, a thing called hubs. We say it's hubs. The 17 communities are going to have a certain structure within them. They are going to have an icon within the community. We're going to put, put in geocaching within the icon in the community. We're going to encourage people to come to our area. They actually get a passport for our area. And as they go from place to place, they can get a passport stamped in each of our different communities. And once you get the 17 community stamp, then you will get a miniature of whiskey, a half bottle of whiskey. I don't know, you know. We haven't got to that stage yet. The way that we're going, as I said, is truly community led. There is no local authority helping us. What we're doing is we're doing off the back of 17 communities. The only help that we actually get is from a group in Scotland called Ailes of Horizons, who are based in government, who Julia represents. 
we go to them when we're stuck and when we're really needing expertise and we look for Ailsa Horizon, who's, who is a social enterprise company, to work for us. We recently became a uh, biosphere, the only place in Scotland that has, ex uh, that has got world heritage recognition. We're going to exploit that to the best of our advantage, I would hope. It's really, truly show the community by working for themselves and working together as true communities. There are 17 communities, I say two of the largest communities, one of them is about 4,000 and the other one is about 10,000. The rest of them go into villages approximately 600 maximum and down to something like 150. That's 150 people who are truly working for communities and working for their well-being and working for the future generations of their community and carry. We have achieved what we have achieved. We have produced leaflets, we have produced a website, we have produced booklets that are going out throughout the full of Scotland and hopefully abroad. I personally believe that the website that we have got is one of the best websites. And it's, it's really, as far as I'm concerned, but I'm no expert, used people are. If you do get a chance, look at it. It's called... Julia? Karen Kesha. Goes to show you how much I know about that. As I say, Julia uh, will fill you in more. But as I say, I am only speaking on behalf of the communities. That's where I come from. I'm a community activist, as you must have realised by this thing. Julia. I think Peter uh, shows the passion that we have uh, with our community and therefore the strength that we have with the people that we're working with. So, when we started this project, Peter said that uh, we went through a process where we decided that we would employ professionals. We are volunteers, uh, we don't all have the relevant amount of expertise in tourism. And what we wanted to be able to do was to make a mark for people to recognise when somebody said the word Carrick, where it was. So we went through a branding exercise and we did some research with local people, with people across Scotland and with people out with Scotland. And we asked them where did they think Carrick was. And the majority of people actually couldn't locate us. So our branding had to therefore mark where we were. We had to say that we're in Ayrshire. Most people in the UK certainly would know that Ayrshire is in the southwest of Scotland. We also wanted to say what we were about. Um, if we had, we had identified that people didn't know um, what, where Carrick was, so therefore potentially they didn't know what was there. Most people have been to Scotland um, and maybe had been to the Highlands or they'd been to Glasgow or Edinburgh, they'd done cultural tours and that sort of thing. So we were saying by coming to Carrick, you would experience more of Scotland. So we gave it a little USP. We also had to use that branding, um, that stamp that says Carrick Ayrshire, was ideally placed to visually show people what Carrick was. And one of the barriers to other agencies promoting Carrick, the likes of Visit Scotland and Visit England, was that actually there wasn't any photography out there. There weren't any nice images that showed people enjoying the area. So we were able to work with Visit Scotland to find out what their gaps were in the photography that they had in order for us to produce portfolio of imagery that we could then use but also could be used by other agencies and try and create some partnerships and get other people to promote us doing <coughs> what we were doing. Peter said that uh, one of the products that we've developed is the Heritage Hubs, um, each community having a distinct identity and getting the community again this bottom-up approach. Each of these communities have chosen their own identity. 
The town Peter comes from is a town called Maybole. It's the ancient capital of Carrick. But it produced over a million boots, pairs of boots a year. And this is what they decided that they wanted to celebrate their town with. Another community of some 300 is one of the last um, areas in the southwest of Scotland that has red squirrels, which are an endangered um, um, animal in Scotland. And this is what they wanted to promote because not only does it recognise it as being an icon of their area, but it also helps to promote the plight of the red squirrel. We have other areas that have good connections with the likes of Charles Rennie Mackintosh, who is a world famous artist and designer. And we can um, cut in and work with followers of Charles Rennie Mackintosh. They can have their experience extended uh, because quite a lot of them didn't know that they had a connection with one of our coastal villages. And that coastal village can use that to make people more aware of Charles Rennie Mackintosh, etc. So it perpetuates the circle. We've kept people informed in everything that we've done. We reiterate this is a bottom up approach. We've produced newsletters for our communities so that we're not just going out to the tourism businesses and saying, this is what we're doing for you. We're telling the communities, this is what we're doing for tourism in your area. And this is what you are doing and helping us with, because it has been a real two-way street. So we've produced newsletters, we've produced booklets, we've produced postcards. Tomorrow I will have some examples of those for you to take away to see the sorts of things that we do. Important are our tourism businesses. They're extremely important and prior to this project being set up there was no network, there was no businesses coming together uh, and trying to learn from each other. We've been able to set up a network and we've got around 140 um, businesses active across our region who are collaborating together, attending meetings that we put together for them. They're setting the agendas. They're saying that they want to talk about cross-selling, selling each other's projects, uh, products. They're wanting to talk about green tourism, eco-tourism, sustainability. They're wanting to perhaps learn a little bit more about human resources, about how they can manage their staff, what sort of courses that they now need to go on to keep up with legislation. We're able to start to provide things like that. And for small one and two men businesses, we're able to do that at little or no cost, which is a great advantage to very small businesses. We this year um, partnered on a major trade exhibition in Scotland which showcases Scotland to the world. And we were on the Visit Scotland stand, along with two or three other um, partners from Ayrshire and Arran, and we were able to say, come and look at what Carrick is, and talk to tour operators, uh, talk to cruise companies, and talk to foreign um, tour companies that are looking for journeys and destinations for their visitors to come on. And that was really good because it put us on a world stage. We have, as Peter said, we have a really good website as well, and we would welcome you're looking at that, and potentially I'll try and organise tomorrow for um, a laptop or a, a something to have uh, something on there for people to look at. But it's not been without its challenges. We've all heard about the challenges, and this, although we feel it's been successful, hasn't been without it. Our challenges have not been our community. Our challenges have essentially been dealing with our stakeholders um, and the agencies and potentially our funders. Um, most of you in this room will be aware of leader funding. Uh, in the UK it's very onerous. Uh, the reporting procedures are really difficult. Um, when you're dealing with very volunteer-led organisations, the reporting is hard, it's long, and one of the other things that we have in the UK 
is all the money is retrospective. So on a £200,000 project where 50% of that money is coming from leader and it's coming when you've spent it, it makes your cash flow very, very difficult. But they've not been insurmountable and despite all of that, we've had a really good response from our communities. We have really good positives. We have got communities and businesses working together. Let's face it, a lot of the time they're one in the same. They're in the same small communities. If the village shop is doing well, then the community is doing well. If the village shop is doing poorly and shuts, it is a little bit of a nail in the coffin for a village. So any of these activities that the community can help to keep businesses going with, through tourism, through support, then that is one of the ways that the villages stay alive. They're all travelling in one direction. They've all got one goal, to increase the tourism product that we have within Carrick, because the communities really recognise the value that we have in, 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 in our heritage, in our history, in our beauty, um, and in our landscapes. We are a well-recognised brand now. Uh, we hope that everybody uh, attending this today will go away and if in years to come they see something that says Carrick Ayrshire, they'll remember this conference and will remember what we've said. What are we planning next? Our project was a two-year project and it comes to its end at the end of this year in terms of funding, but we won't stop there. We will look for other funding to develop our trails, more walks and pathways, more active tourism. We have a huge coastline and we have lots of opportunities. So we're going to be heading in that direction. We're going to make sure our businesses um, are fit to continue in that direction and we will be providing them with tools to continue to do that. So the future is very, very positive. Yes, we will need more money to do that. And yes, the challenge then goes back to trying to get things like European funding. But we will get slicker at it as we go and we will get better at it and get more and more projects going for perpetuity. So that's Carrick. Thank you for listening. I hope I've got some of your language in there. I've got them all right. Um, and any questions? Thank you. Any questions? Thank you. Thank you. I would actually like to ask uh, one question uh, from from all the all the speakers and uh, actually from audience as well. Um, I got the feeling when, when as a volunteer I tried to develop uh, tourism in our village and in quite many other villages as well. Uh, there is always a discussion about uh, is it possible and where is where are, are we uh, crazy or not when we are trying to do that. But I think uh, after hearing all these presentations, uh, we once again got an idea that yes it is, but it does need time and it does need resources. Uh, would you still like to say something about that topic? I'm now also thinking about the coming uh, EU uh, program period and so on because uh, we have heard uh, that leader and, and uh, all the other programs are needed and the EU is needed to help us at least here in, in Europe. But would somebody want to say still something now before we, we go to the next sessions? I agree. Uh, 
I think that such development uh, as it was presented uh, is needed uh, and uh, above all uh, without volunteers it also is difficult uh, that it will happen which also says that you need an expertise in certain elements and steps and that cannot be done voluntarily so I, 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 I can also stress that and, and it is a good uh, a management uh, which which assess when is the right moment to do it uh, in, in, in let's say kind of volunteer uh, way and when you need uh, professionals because uh, certainly especially when we come to I don't know marketing product development, our emotions sometimes are not showing the right need on the market and also I believe this, this element should be assessed from somebody which is uh, out of the bo box so to speak. Well I can't say anything uh, about uh, forthcoming European programs, I'm not fully informed but I, I believe and as it was in, in this current perspective that there will be always uh, available such uh, support to, to things like like community tourism and uh, I would say uh, local economic development and I'm sure that uh, uh, the next uh, perspective of leader being one of I would say probably the most known among us uh, would still uh, help elements where, where such initiatives could get support but I, I again I am not informed enough depth to, to comment on this side. It will be much more difficult probably uh, as it was up to now to find uh, the, the good and uh, available resources, much more responsible also in, in a way to, to spend them. A uh, lot of probably demands for both administrative and uh, uh, I would say um, measurable impact which uh, will happen through this project so we, I believe that this could maybe also sharpen uh, our, our thoughts and uh, uh, ideas in a way that they, they get them full support. Thank you. I just wanted to actually agree with Marco there on the importance that will be placed on any new funding uh, streams that come through. But I think that the onus needs to be on communities to make sure that what they're doing now is very well measured and reported and recorded and supported. Um, and that's the value that the volunteers need to bring um, to the community tourism aspect um, of making sure that everything we do is recorded and supported. Um, and that will then show the value of what's been done to date and therefore show that it's worth the continuance of support. Does somebody still want to say something about this or, or shall we uh, <coughs> close this session and uh, so you can go to the Kaya room or when uh, we are going to have coffee at uh, Thank you very much.